The Japanese Empire occupied the Dutch East Indies, now Indonesia, during World War II from March 1942 until after the end of the war in September 1945. The period was one of the most critical in Indonesian history. The Dutch East Indies had been a colony of the Netherlands the Dutch since 1819. However, the Netherlands itself had been occupied by Germany, and thus had little ability to defend its colony against the Japanese army, and less than three months after the first attacks on Borneo, the Japanese navy and army overran Dutch and Allied forces. Initially, most Indonesians joyfully welcomed the Japanese as liberators from their Dutch colonial masters. The sentiment changed, however, as Indonesians realized that they were expected to endure more hardship for the Japanese war effort. In 1944–1945, Allied troops largely bypassed Indonesia and did not fight their way into the most populous parts such as Java and Sumatra. As such, most of Indonesia was still under Japanese occupation at the time of its surrender in August 1945. The occupation was the first serious challenge to the Dutch in Indonesia and ended the Dutch colonial rule, and, by its end, changes were so numerous and extraordinary that the subsequent watershed, the Indonesian National Revolution, was possible in a manner unfeasible just three years earlier. Unlike the Dutch, the Japanese facilitated the politicization of Indonesians down to the village level. Particularly in Java and, to a lesser extent, Sumatra, the Japanese educated, trained and armed many young Indonesians and gave their nationalist leaders a political voice. Thus, through both the destruction of the Dutch colonial regime and the facilitation of Indonesian nationalism, the Japanese occupation created the conditions for the proclamation of Indonesian independence within days of the Japanese surrender in the Pacific. However, the Netherlands sought to reclaim the Indies, and a bitter five-year diplomatic, military and social struggle ensued, resulting in the Netherlands recognizing Indonesian sovereignty in December 1949. <laughs> <laughs> Background Until 1942, Indonesia was colonized by the Netherlands and was known as the Dutch East Indies. In 1929, during the Indonesian National Awakening, Indonesian nationalist leaders Sukarno and Muhammad Hatta later founding president and vice president, foresaw a Pacific War and that a Japanese advance on Indonesia might be advantageous for the independence cause. The Japanese spread the word that they were the light of Asia. Japan was the only Asian nation that had successfully transformed itself into a modern technological society at the end of the 19th century and it remained independent when most Asian countries had been under European or American power, and had beaten a European power, Russia, in war. Following its military campaign in China Japan turned its attention to Southeast Asia, advocating to other Asians a greater East Asian co-prosperity sphere, which they described as a type of trade zone under Japanese leadership. The Japanese had gradually spread their influence through Asia in the first half of the 20th century and during the 1920s and 1930s had established business links in the Indies. These ranged from small-town barbers, photographic studios and salesmen, to large department stores and firms such as Suzuki and Mitsubishi becoming involved in the sugar trade. The Japanese population peaked in 1931 with 6,949 residents before starting a gradual decrease, largely due to economic tensions between Japan and the Netherlands Indies government. A number of Japanese had been sent by their government to establish links with Indonesian nationalists, particularly with Muslim parties, while Indonesian nationalists were sponsored to visit Japan. Such encouragement of Indonesian nationalism was part of a broader Japanese plan for an Asia for the Asians. While most Indonesians were hopeful for the Japanese promise of an end to the Dutch racially based system, Chinese Indonesians, who enjoyed a privileged position under Dutch rule, were less optimistic. Also concerned were members of the Indonesian Communist underground who followed the Soviet Union's popular united front against fascism. Japanese aggression in Manchuria and China in the late 1930s caused anxiety amongst the Chinese in Indonesia who set up funds to support the anti-Japanese effort. Dutch intelligence services also monitored Japanese living in Indonesia. In November 1941, Majlis Rakjat Indonesia, an Indonesian organization of religious, political, and trade union groups, submitted a memorandum to the Dutch East Indies government requesting the mobilization of the Indonesian people in the face of the war threat. The memorandum was refused because the government did not consider the Majlis Rakyat Indonesia to be representative of the people. Within only four months, the Japanese had occupied the archipelago. The invasion 
On 8 December 1941, the Netherlands declared war on Japan. In January the American-British-Dutch-Australian Command was formed to coordinate Allied forces in Southeast Asia, under the command of General Archibald Wavell. In the weeks leading up to the invasion, senior Dutch government officials went into exile, taking political prisoners, family, and personal staff to Australia. Before the arrival of Japanese troops, there were conflicts between rival Indonesian groups where people were killed, vanished or went into hiding. Chinese and Dutch-owned properties were ransacked and destroyed. The invasion in early 1942 was swift and complete. By January 1942, parts of Sulawesi and Kalimantan were under Japanese control. By February, the Japanese had landed on Sumatra where they had encouraged the Aisnes to rebel against the Dutch. On 19 February, having already taken Ambon, the Japanese Eastern Task Force landed in Timor, dropping a special parachute unit into West Timor near Kupang, and landing in the Dili area of Portuguese Timor to drive out the Allied forces which had invaded in December. On 27 February, the Allied Navy's last effort to contain Japan was swept aside by their defeat in the Battle of the Java Sea. From 28 February to 1 March 1942, Japanese troops landed on four places along the northern coast of Java almost undisturbed. The fiercest fighting had been in invasion points in Ambon, Timor, Kalimantan, and on the Java Sea. In places where there were no Dutch troops, such as Bali, there was no fighting. On 9 March, the Dutch commander surrendered along with Governor-General Jonkier A. W. L. Jarda van Starkenborgs to Hauer. The Japanese occupation was initially greeted with optimistic enthusiasm by Indonesians who came to meet the Japanese army waving flags and shouting support such as, Japan is our older brother, and Banzai Dai Nippon. As the Japanese advanced, rebellious Indonesians in virtually every part of the archipelago killed groups of Europeans, particularly the Dutch, and informed the Japanese reliably on the whereabouts of larger groups. As famed Indonesian writer Pramodya Ananda Tower noted, with the arrival of the Japanese just about everyone was full of hope, except for those who had worked in the service of the Dutch. The occupation The colonial army was consigned to detention camps and Indonesian soldiers were released. Expecting that Dutch administrators would be kept by the Japanese to run the colony, most Dutch had refused to leave. Instead, they were sent to concentration camps and Japanese or Indonesian replacements were installed in senior and technical positions. Japanese troops took control of government infrastructure and services such as ports and postal services. In addition to the 100,000 European and some Chinese civilians interned, 80,000 Dutch, British, Australia, and U.S. Allied troops went to prisoner of war camps where the death rates were between 13 and 30 percent. The Indonesian ruling class, composed of local officials and politicians who had formerly worked for the Dutch colonial government, co-operated with the Japanese military authorities, who in turn helped to keep the local political elites in power and employ them to supply newly arrived Japanese industrial concerns and businesses and the armed forces chiefly auxiliary military and police units run by the Japanese military in the Dutch East Indies. Indonesian cooperation allowed the Japanese military government to focus on securing the large archipelago's waterways and skies and using its islands as defence posts against any Allied attacks which were assumed to most likely come from Australia. The Japanese colonial rulers divided Indonesia into three separate regions, Sumatra was placed under the 25th Army, Java and Madura were under the 16th Army, while Borneo and eastern Indonesia were controlled by the 2nd South Fleet of the Imperial Japanese Navy the, IJN. the 16th Army and the 25th Army were headquartered in Singapore and also controlled Malaya until April 1943, when its command was narrowed to just Sumatra and the headquarters moved to Bukatinggi. The 16th Army was headquartered in Jakarta, while the IJN's 2nd South Fleet was headquartered in Makassar. Experience of the occupation varied considerably, depending upon where one lived and one's social position. Many who lived in areas considered important to the war effort experienced torture, sex slavery, arbitrary arrest and execution, and other war crimes. Many thousands of people were taken away from Indonesia as forced laborers for Japanese military projects, including the Burma Siam and Saketi Baya Railways, and suffered or died as a result of ill treatment and starvation. 
Between 4 and 10 million Ramusha in Java were forced to work by the Japanese military. About 270,000 of these Javanese laborers were sent to other Japanese held areas in Southeast Asia. Only 52,000 were repatriated to Java, meaning that there was a death rate of 80%. Tens of thousands of Indonesians were to starve, work as slave laborers, or be forced from their homes. In the national revolution that followed, tens, even hundreds, of thousands, would die in fighting against the Japanese, Allied forces, and other Indonesians, before independence was achieved. A later United Nations report stated that 4 million people died in Indonesia as a result of famine and forced labor during the Japanese occupation, including 30,000 European civilian internee deaths. A Dutch government study described how the Japanese military recruited women as prostitutes by force in Indonesia. It concluded that among the 200 to 300 European women working in the Japanese military brothels, some 65 were most certainly forced into prostitution. Other young women and their families, faced with various pressures in the internment camps or in wartime society, agreed to offers of work, the nature of which was frequently not explicitly stated. Materially, whole railway lines, railway rolling stock, and industrial plants in Java were appropriated and shipped back to Japan and Manchuria. British intelligence reports during the occupation noted significant removals of any materials that could be used in the war effort. Next to Sutan Sharir who led the student Pamuda underground, the only prominent opposition politician was leftist Amir Sharifuddin who was given 25,000 guilders by the Dutch in early 1942 to organize an underground resistance through his Marxist and nationalist connections. The Japanese arrested Amir in 1943, and he only escaped execution following intervention from Sukarno, whose popularity in Indonesia and hence importance to the war effort was recognized by the Japanese. Apart from Amir's Surabaya-based group, the most active pro-Allied activities were among the Chinese, Ambanese, and Manadanese. In South Kalimantan, a scheme by Indonesian nationalists and Dutch against the Japanese was uncovered before the Ponchanak incident occurred. According to some sources this happened in September 1943 at Amantai in South Kalimantan and involved establishing up an Islamic state and expelling the Japanese but the plan was defeated. In 1943 the Japanese beheaded Tenku Ramadwala, a member of the royal family of the Sultanate of Serdang. In the 1943–1944 Ponchanak incidents also known as the Mandar Affair, the Japanese orchestrated a mass arrest of Malay elites and Arabs, Chinese, Javanese, Manadanese, Dayaks, Bugis, Bataks, Manankabao, Dutch, Indians, and Eurasians in Kalimantan, including all of the Malay sultans, accused them of plotting to overthrow Japanese rule, and then massacred them. The Japanese falsely claimed that all of those ethnic groups and organizations such as the Islamic Pamuda Muhammadiyah were involved in a plot to overthrow the Japanese and create a ''People's Republic of West Borneo'' Negara Rakyat Borneo Bharat. The Japanese claimed that ''Sultans, Chinese, Indonesian government officials, Indians and Arabs, who had been antagonistic to each other, joined together to massacre Japanese'' naming the Sultan of the Ponchanak Sultanate as one of the ringleaders in the planned rebellion. Up to 25 aristocrats, relatives of the Sultan of Ponchanak, and many other prominent individuals were named as participants in the plot by the Japanese and then executed at Mandar. The Sultans of Ponchanak, Sambas, Ketapang, Sekadana, Simbang, Kobo, Nga Bang, Songa, Sekadao, Tajan, Singtan, and Mempawa were all executed by the Japanese, respectively. Their names were Sharif Muhammad Al Qadri, Muhammad Ibrahim Safidadin, Ghosti Sawainan, Tenkoi Idris, Ghosti Masir, Sharif Salah, Ghosti Abdul Hamid, Aid Muhammad Arif, Ghosti Muhammad Kelip, Ghosti Japar, Raiden Abdul Bari Dano Perdana, and Muhammad Ahaufiak. They are known as the 12 Doko. In Java, the Japanese jailed Siaraf Abdul Hamid al Qadri, the son of Sultan Siaraf Muhammad al Qadri. Sharif Muhammad al -Qadri. Since he was in Java during the executions, Hamid II was the only male in his family not killed, while the Japanese beheaded all 28 other male relatives of Ponchanak Sultan Muhammad al Qadri. Among the 29 people of the Sultan of Ponchanak's family who were beheaded by the Japanese was the heir to the Ponchanak throne. Later in 1944, the Dayaks assassinated a Japanese man named Nakatani, who was involved in the incident and who was known for his cruelty. 
Sultan of Panchanak Muhammad Alkadri's fourth son, Pengaran Agoan Panjaran Agang, and another son, Pengaran Adipati, Panjaran Adipati were both killed by the Japanese in the incident. The Japanese had beheaded both Panjaran Adipati and Panjaran Agang, in a public execution. The Japanese extermination of the Malay elite of Panchanak paved the way for a new Dayak elite to arise in its place. According to Mary F. Summers Hydehuse, during May and June 1945, some Japanese were killed in a rebellion by the Dayaks in Sangha. According to Jamie S. Davidson, this rebellion, during which many Dayaks and Japanese were killed, occurred from April through August 1945, and was called the Majang Desa War. The Panchanak incidents, or affairs, are divided into two Panchanak incidents by scholars, variously categorized according to mass killings and arrests, which occurred in several stages on different dates. The Panchanak incident negatively impacted the Chinese community in Kalimantan. The Aisnis Ulama Islamic clerics fought against both the Dutch and the Japanese, revolting against the Dutch in February 1942 and against Japan in November 1942. The revolt was led by the All Aceh Religious Scholars Association Pusa. The Japanese suffered 18 dead in the uprising while they slaughtered up to 100 or over 120 Aisnis. The revolt happened in Bayu and was centered around Tjot Pling Village's religious school. During the revolt, the Japanese troops armed with mortars and machine guns were charged by sword-wielding Aisnis under Tunku Abduljalil Tenku Abdul Jalil in below Gampong Tunga and Tjot Pling on 10 and 13 November. In May 1945 the Aisnis rebelled again. Indonesian nationalism In the decades before the war, the Dutch had been overwhelmingly successful in suppressing the small nationalist movement in Indonesia such that the Japanese proved fundamental for coming Indonesian independence. During the occupation, the Japanese encouraged and backed Indonesian nationalistic sentiments, created new Indonesian institutions, and promoted nationalist leaders such as Sukarno. The openness now provided to Indonesian nationalism, combined with the Japanese destruction of much of the Dutch colonial state, were fundamental to the Indonesian national revolution that followed World War II. Nonetheless, within two months of the occupation, the Japanese did not allow the political use of the word Indonesia as the name for a nation, neither did they allow the use of the nationalistic red and white Indonesian flag. In fact, any discussion, organization, speculation or propaganda concerning the political organization or government of the country also in the media was strictly forbidden. They split up the Dutch East Indies into three separate regions and referred to it as the Southern Territories. While Tokyo prepared the Philippines for independence in 1943, they simultaneously decided to annex the Indonesian islands into the Greater Japanese Empire. Until late 1944 when the Pacific War was at a turning point the Japanese never seriously supported Indonesian independence, the Japanese regime perceived Java as the most politically sophisticated but economically the least important area, its people were Japan's main resource. As such, and in contrast to Dutch suppression, the Japanese encouraged Indonesian nationalism in Java and thus increased its political sophistication similar encouragement of nationalism in strategic resource-rich Sumatra came later, but only after it was clear the Japanese would lose the war. The outer islands under naval control, however, were regarded as politically backward but economically vital for the Japanese war effort, and these regions were governed the most oppressively of all. These experiences and subsequent differences in nationalistic politicization would have profound impacts on the course of the Indonesian Revolution in the years immediately following independence 1945 to gain support and mobilize Indonesian people in their war effort against the Western Allied force, Japanese occupation forces encouraged Indonesian nationalistic movements and recruited Indonesian nationalist leaders, Sukarno, Hatta, Ki Hajar Dewantara and Kyai Haji Mas Mansir to rally the people's support for mobilization center Patera on 16 April 1943, replaced with Jawa Hakakai on 1 March 1944. Some of these mobilized populations were sent to forced labor as Ramusha. Japanese military also provided Indonesian youth with military training and weapons, including the formation of a volunteer army called PETA Pembela Tana Air, Defenders of the Homeland. 
The Japanese military training for Indonesian youth originally was meant to rally local support for the collapsing power of the Japanese Empire, but later became the significant resource for the Republic of Indonesia during the Indonesian National Revolution, and also led to the formation of Indonesian National Armed Forces in 1945. On 29 April 1945, Lieutenant Gen. Kumakichi Harada, the commander of 16th Army in Java established the Investigating Committee for Preparatory Work for Independence Indonesian, Baden Penyelidik USAHA Persiapan Kemerdekan BPUPK Japanese, Du Li Zun Bei Diao Za Wei Dokuritsu Junbi Chosakai, as the initial stage of the establishment of independence for the area under the control of the 16th Army, in addition to newfound Indonesian nationalism, equally important for the coming independence struggle and internal revolution was the Japanese orchestrated economic, political and social dismantling and destruction of the Dutch colonial state. <inaudible> End of the occupation General MacArthur wanted to fight his way with Allied troops to liberate Java in 1944–45 but was ordered not to by the Joint Chiefs and President Roosevelt. The Japanese occupation thus officially ended with Japanese surrender in the Pacific and two days later Sukarno declared Indonesian independence. However Indonesian forces would spend the next four years fighting the Dutch for independence. American restraint from fighting their way into Java certainly saved many Japanese, Javanese, Dutch and American lives. However, Indonesian independence would have likely been achieved more swiftly and smoothly had MacArthur had his way and American troops occupied Java. A later UN report stated that 4 million people died in Indonesia as a result of the Japanese occupation. About 2.4 million people died in Java from famine during 1944–45. Liberation of the internment camps holding Western prisoners was not swift. Conditions were better during post-war internment than under previous internment, for, this time, Red Cross supplies were made available and the Allies made the Japanese order the most heinous and cruel occupiers home. After four months of post-war internment, Western internees were released on the condition they left Indonesia. Most of the Japanese military personnel and civilian colonial administrators were repatriated to Japan following the war, although the process took nearly a year for most individuals, and often two years or more. Following screening for war crimes, physical labor or security duty for thousands more, and war crimes trials for approximately 1,038 individuals, they were sent back to Japan aboard remaining Japanese vessels. Approximately 1,000 Japanese soldiers deserted from their units then under Allied command and assimilated themselves into local communities. Many of these soldiers joined the TNI or other Indonesian military organizations, and a number of these former Japanese soldiers died during the Indonesian National Revolution, including Abdul Rachman Ichiki Tatsua. The final stages of warfare were initiated in October 1945 when, in accordance with the terms of their surrender, the Japanese tried to re-establish the authority they relinquished to Indonesians in the towns and cities. Japanese military police killed Republican Pemuda in Pakalongan on 3 October, and Japanese troops drove Republican Pemuda out of Bandung in West Java and handed the city to the British, but the fiercest fighting involving the Japanese was in Semarang. On 14 October, British forces began to occupy the city. Retreating Republican forces retaliated by killing between 130 and 300 Japanese prisoners they were holding. 500 Japanese and 2,000 Indonesians had been killed and the Japanese had almost captured the city six days later when British forces arrived. I, of course, knew that we had been forced to keep Japanese troops under arms to protect our lines of communication and vital areas but it was nevertheless a great shock to me to find over a thousand Japanese troops guarding the nine miles of road from the airport to the town. Until 1949, the returning Dutch authorities held 448 war crimes trials against 1038 suspects. 969 of those were condemned 93.4% with 236 24.4% receiving a death sentence. Topic. See also. Japanese run internment camps Bulu prison massacre Topic Citations Topic References
Baldacchino, Godfrey, ed. 2013. The Political Economy of Divided Islands, Unified Geographies, Multiple Polities. Palgrave Macmillan. ISBN 1-137-02313-9. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Cribb, Robert, Brown, Colin Modern Indonesia, A History Since 1945. Harlow, Essex, England, Longman Group. ISBN 978-0-582-05713-5. Davidson, Jamie Seth Violence and Politics in West Kalimantan, Indonesia. University of Washington. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Davidson, Jamie S. August 2003. Quote, quote, primitive. Politics, the Rise and Fall of the Dayak Unity Party in West Kalimantan, Indonesia. PDF. Asia Research Institute Working Paper Series RE Working Paper. Asia Research Institute of the National University of Singapore No. 9. Archived from the original PDF on 18 May 2014. Retrieved 17 May 2014. Davidson, Jamie Seth 2009. From Rebellion to Riots, Collective Violence on Indonesian Borneo. NUS Press. ISBN 9971-69-427-1. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Federspiel, Howard M. 2007. Sultans, Shamans, and Saints, Islam and Muslims in Southeast Asia Illustrated ed. University of Hawaii Press. ISBN 0-8248-3052-0. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Friend, Theodore 2003. Indonesian Destinies. The Belknap Press of Harvard University Press. ISBN 978-0-674-01834-1. Hyde Hughes, Mary F. Summers 2003. Gold Diggers, Farmers, and Traders in the Chinese Districts of West Kalimantan, Indonesia. Volume 34 of Southeast Asia Publications Series Illustrated ed. Seep Publications. ISBN 0-87727-733-8. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Gotu, Kenichi October 1976. Life and Death of. Abdul Rachman. 1906, 49, One Aspect of Japanese-Indonesian Relationships. Indonesia, 2257-68. Horton, William Bradley, July 2016. History Unhinged, World War II and the Reshaping of Indonesian History, a dissertation submitted to the Graduate School of Literature, Waseda University ed. Tokyo, Waseda University. Wei, Yu Feng, 2011. Strangers at Home, History and Subjectivity Among the Chinese Communities of West Kalimantan, Indonesia. Volume 5 of Chinese Overseas Illustrated ed. Brill. ISBN 90-04-17340-4. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Indonesia. Angkatan Darat. Pusat Sejara Militar 1965. Sejara TNI Angkatan Darat, 1945-1965, TJET, 1. PUSSEMAD. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Indonesia. Panitia Penjusun Naska Buku. 20 Tahan Indonesia Merdeka. Indonesia. 20 I. E. Dua Pulo. Tahan Indonesia Merdeka, Vol. 7. Departemen Penerangan. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Indonesia. Departemen Penerangan. 20 Tahan Indonesia Merdeka, Vol. 7. Departemen Penerangan R.I. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Jong, Louis. 2002. The Collapse of a Colonial Society, The Dutch in Indonesia During the Second World War. Volume 206 of Verhandelingen van het Koninklijk Nederlands Geologisch Mijnbouwkundig Genootschap, Volume 206 of Verhandelingen van het Koninklijk Instituut Vortal, Land en Volkenkunde, Illustrated ed. KITLV Press. ISBN 90-6718-203-6. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Excerpta Indonesitsa, Volumes 64-66. Contributor Koninklijk Instituut voor Taal, Land en Volkenkunde, Netherlands. Afdeling Documentati Modern Indonesi. Center for Documentation on Modern Indonesia of the Royal Institute of Linguistics and Anthropology, 2001. 
Retrieved 10 March 2014. Kratoska, Paul H., ed. 2002. Southeast Asian Minorities in the Wartime Japanese Empire. Psychology Press. ISBN 0-7007-1488-X. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Kratoska, Paul H., ed. 2013. Southeast Asian Minorities in the Wartime Japanese Empire. Routledge. ISBN 1-136-12506-X. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Kusuma, A. B., Elson, R. E. 2011. A Note on the Sources for the 1945 Constitutional Debates in Indonesia. Beidragen tot Detal, Land en Volkenkunde, Journal of the Humanities and Social Sciences of Southeast Asia, 167, 2-3, 196-209, doi, 10.1163-2213479-9000358-9, ISSN 0006-2294. Martinkus, John. 2004. Indonesia's Secret War in Aceh. Illustrated ed. Random House Australia. ISBN 1-74051-209-X. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Abdul Haris Nasution. 1963. Tentara Nasional Indonesia, Vol. 1. Ganako. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Keat Jin, Ui. 2013. Post-War Borneo, 1945-1950, Nationalism, Empire and State Building. Routledge. ISBN 1-134-05810-1. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Ui, Keat Jin, 2013. Post-War Borneo, 1945-50, Nationalism, Empire and State Building. Routledge. ISBN 1-134-05803-9. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Post, Peter, et al., eds., 2010. The Encyclopedia of Indonesia in the Pacific War. Leiden, Brill. ISBN 978-90-04-16866-4, CS1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List, Link. Tsai, Su Min, Hoon, Chong Yao, eds., 2013. Chinese Indonesians Reassessed, History, Religion and Belonging. Volume 52 of Routledge Contemporary Southeast Asia Series Illustrated ed. Routledge. ISBN 0-415-60801-5. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Rickliffs, Merle Calvin 2001. A History of Modern Indonesia Since C-1200 Illustrated ed. Stanford University Press. ISBN 0-8047-4480-7. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Rickliffs, Merle Calvin 1991. A History of Modern Indonesia Since c. 1300 2nd ed. Macmillan. Rickliffs, Merle Calvin 1993. A History of Modern Indonesia Since c. 1300 2nd ed. Stanford, California, Stanford University Press. p. 207. ISBN 978-0-8047-2194-3. Retrieved 19 April 2011. Taylor, Jean Gelman 2003. Indonesia, Peoples and Histories. New Haven and London, Yale University Press. ISBN 0-300-10518-5. Vickers, Adrain 2005. A History Modern of Indonesia. Cambridge. ISBN 978-0-521-54262-3. Tempo, Indonesia's Weekly News Magazine, Vol. 3, Issues 43-52. Arsa Raya Perdana, 2003. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Barita Kajian Sumatera, Sumatra Research Bulletin, Volumes 1-4. Contributors Sumatra Research Council Hull, England, University of Hull Center for Southeast Asian Studies. Dewan Penjelidakan Sumatera, 1971. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Sejara Iyahernya Tentara Nasional Indonesia. Contributor Indonesia. Angkatan Darat. Commando Daira Militar 2 Bukit Barisan. Sejara Militar. Sejara Militar Dam 2, BB, 1970. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Topic. Further reading 
Anderson, Ben 1972. Java in a Time of Revolution, Occupation and Resistance, 1944–1946. Ithaca, NY: Cornell University Press. ISBN 978-0-8014-0687-4. Hillen, Ernest The Way of a Boy, A Memoir of Java. Toronto, Viking. ISBN 978-0-670-85049-5 External links Media related to Japanese occupation of Indonesia at Wikimedia Commons